All right, well, I think it's time for us to try to connect entropy with the partition function. So remember that we've derived partition functions for monatomic, diatomic, polyatomic, ideal gases, and shown that there are many properties of ideal gases we can compute directly from these partition functions. Let's make a connection between entropy and the partition function. And so let me remind you that from an earlier video this week, we established that the entropy of an ensemble was Boltzmann's constant times A log A minus sum over J little a log A, where that capital A was how many systems are there in the ensemble, and the little a was the population of each of those systems. So that being the, the definitions, you can also talk about the average entropy of a given system, and that's just going to be the total entropy of the ensemble divided by the number of systems. You can also talk about the probability P sub J of choosing a system in state J. And that is, how many are there in state J? Divided by how many there are total. Right? So in that case, I could just say AJ is equal to PJ times capital A. So let me substitute those expressions into the ensemble entropy. That is, I'll go from uh, little a's to little p's times capital A. So I get A log A minus this expression. I'll expand this out a bit, so multiply through. Boltzmann's constant times A log A minus KA, here's this A. This is a log of a product, so I'll just keep playing this game. Log of a product is a sum of logarithms. And so I'll get a P log P term, and I'll get a log A term. A is just a number, it's a constant. So what comes out is KA log A and then a sum over j of all the probabilities. But that sum is just the number 1. If I consider the probability over all the systems, that adds up to 1. I will pick a system. So the first term, k a log a, and the last term, k a log a, those drop out. And I'm left with the entropy of the ensemble is k times a p, sum over j p log p. Okay, and that just expresses, yes indeed, the sum of all those probabilities is 1. Now, if I were to divide both sides by A, this A drops out on this term, and the entropy of the ensemble divided by the total number of systems in the ensemble, that's the average system entropy. And so the system entropy is equal to minus K sum over the individual states P log P. So this is another way to write entropy. We've seen a lot of ways to write entropy. K log W, K log omega, and here we have k p log p. This is the probability form of the entropy. And a couple of things, if you're worried about the fact that the probability could go to zero, and the log of zero is negative infinity, and that doesn't seem very good, you can actually use L'Hopital's rule to establish that in the limit, as x goes to zero, x times log x is equal to zero. It does not go to negative infinity. So that's nice. You'll also see that if all the probabilities are zero, except for one, then for that single one, it'll be one times the log of one. Log of one is zero, so I'll get the entropy is zero. And that's what I expect, right? There's no disorder if everything is one thing. In addition, you can show, and you would use this, you'd have to use calculus to show this, and a special little trick that only n minus 1 of the probabilities are independent. That last probability depends on all the others. But if you play around with that, you might be able to prove to yourself that the entropy is maximized when all the probabilities are equal for all possible states. But what I want to focus on now is that remember, in the NV beta ensemble, or NVT, remember that beta is just 1 over KT, in that ensemble, we had a way to define the probability. It's e to the minus beta times the energy sub j divided by the partition function, which is the sum over all possible exponentials, all possible energies, that is. And so if I now swap that in for p, I get entropy is equal to minus Boltzmann's constant, sum over j. Here's my probability. Here's the log of my probability. And this is a log of a quotient, so I'll take a difference of logs. So I get minus kb, here's this prefactor term, log of an exponential, that just annihilates both those functions. I'm just left with the argument of the exponential, minus beta e sub j. 
And then meanwhile, I've got a minus log q here, minus log q. So given this expression for the entropy, I can manipulate it a little bit more. So recall uh, that here I've got a probability. Here I've got a beta, so that's a 1 over kt. So if I pull all this out front, the k's will cancel, and the negative signs cancel, and I'm left with a 1 over t. And here's this energy term. Meanwhile, I've got a k times a log q, and it is over q from this term. So you can do the algebra yourself. But what is this? What is the sum of the probability weighted energies? That is the internal energy. That defines the internal energy. Meanwhile, what's this? Sum e to the minus beta ej over all possible j's. That's the partition function, q. So this q cancels this q. So I have this relatively simple expression, s is equal to u over t plus k log q. And let me write that in a slightly more traditional form, which recognizes that u depends on the partition function. That we've already derived. So we get s is equal to kt partial log q partial t plus k log q. So probability weighted energy is the internal energy. That was a key step we used. This sum is equal to the partition function, a key step we used. And the take home message, which is particularly important, is that entropy can be computed directly from the partition function, just as we've been successful with internal energy, with pressure, with heat capacity. So let me consider then the entropy of a monatomic ideal gas. So remember, this is Q, capital Q, for a monatomic ideal gas. It's got something coming from translation, it's got something coming from electronic degeneracy of the ground state, and it's got an n factorial term. So if I take the partial derivative of the log of Q with respect to T, well, when I take the log, all these things will separate out because logs take products and uh, quotients and make individual terms. The only thing that will be left is a t, the lo log of t, and there's to the 3n over 2 power. So 3n over 2 will come out. I'll get derivative of log t with respect to t. That's 1 over t. So there's the log term I need to worry about. Meanwhile, log q itself, that takes a little longer to work with. When I take this log, it's convenient to remember that there's a 1 over n factorial term here. So I'll put this over here as minus log n factorial. I'm going to take this n out of these two exponents and multiply the logarithm and just leave behind this argument. I'll use Stirling's approximation to simplify the log factorial term. And I will then take this log of n it's minus n log n. Well, I've got a log minus another log. So I can divide by n. They're both already multiplied by n. So that's why n appears here in the denominator. I've put it underneath the volume. So this is a convenient way to have the log expressed. Because now I can work with this expression for the entropy. Here's my partial log q partial t that I'm going to need. Here's my log q that I'm going to need on this side. I've run out of space on this slide, so let me try to pack all of that back in on another slide to finish the, the derivation. If I take the molar entropy, that is my n values here, are going to be Avogadro's number, well, then I will get a k times log q. Well, here's n Avogadro's number, so that's going to introduce some r's. So if you carry the multiplication all the way out. Here's the r times the log of all this quantity. I'll get a k times Avogadro's number, another factor of r. So that's just a plain old r sitting off by itself. What do I get here? I get 1 over t multiplies kt. The t's go away. So I get Boltzmann's constant times 3 times Avogadro's number over 2. Well, the Avogadro's number times Boltzmann's constant is r, so I get 3 halves r. I get 3 halves r from this term, and another factor of r that came from this term, that's where this 5 halves r comes from. 
And then meanwhile, the remaining piece here is this part of log Q being multiplied times K using Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number is now what appears here in the denominator. So a couple things to notice about this expression. One is, look, so let's pull all the way back to chemistry again and think about concepts. What dictates whether the entropy is large, lots of disorder, or small, not very much disorder? Okay, well, let's just look at some of the terms that can be variable. One term is the mass. So this is the mass of the gas. And what we see here is that if it gets larger, the entropy will be larger. And is that consistent with what we expect? Well, this is actually, if you recall, deriving from the translational partition function. As the mass gets larger, the density of translational levels becomes greater. The levels get closer and closer together. So they're more accessible. There are more ways to distribute the gas in the individual molecules, that is, to their translational levels. That is greater disorder. So that's consistent with the way we should think about entropy. What else can we control? We can control temperature. So as we raise the temperature, the entropy will increase. And once again, the way to think about that is population of levels. Now I haven't changed the spacing between the levels. They are whatever they are for the gas. But by using a higher temperature, I can access more of those levels. Right? The e to the minus something over kT. As T gets bigger, the probability goes up of getting into those levels. More disorder. Volume. If we have a larger volume, the entropy goes up. And so that, again, makes sense. The, the spacing between the levels and the particle in a box solution depends on the volume those levels are in. The bigger the volume, the denser the spacing. Right? So this is all consistent. And then finally, a given gas that may have a larger electronic ground state degeneracy, that will also influence things. And that one, in a sense, is, is a little bit more trivial to see. You know, if I've got a ground state that can be spin up or spin down, let's say, maybe it's the hydrogen atom as an ideal gas, slightly unusual ideal gas, but you can imagine it. So up, down, same energy, there will be two possibilities, and that's greater disorder. So the entropy will increase by a factor of R log two as opposed to one if there's no degeneracy in the ground state. Well, okay, so that is a uh, look at the monatomic ideal gas. Let, let's pause here for a moment. I'm gonna let you think about implications for a diatomic ideal gas. All right, hopefully uh, the concepts where you've talked about that tries to tie the partition function and the entropy together, but moreover to weave in the molecular concepts and the molecular behavior of a gas, that's a little more clear. We always should approach these things and ask sort of sanity questions. Does the formula, is it consistent with what I expect, understanding the physics of the molecules and the way they interact and their chemistry? Next, what I want to do is come back to beta. So we introduced beta some time ago, and I told you to just accept on faith, essentially, that it was 1 over Boltzmann's constant times the temperature. But next, I want to effectively prove that finally.